Hi everyone, Happy New Year! I hope you and your family had a wonderful holiday. With the new year, you may notice that I decided to redecorate my office. I put up two photos representing two of the happiest moments of my life. One is the day I married my wife. The second one is the birth of my child, which took place in 2021. So, uh, we have so much to talk about. So with no further ado, let's dive right into it. First, if you're new here, welcome. My name is TC Wu and I'm the CEO of WPR Real Estate. We're a locally owned and operated real estate firm that has been specializing in working with real estate investors in the property management and sales area for over 50 years. Okay, let's talk about the huge announcement made by Federal Reserve in December, also known as the Fed tapering. <laughs> As you can recall, back in March 2020, there was serious concern that our economy could collapse, business would fail, lending would freeze, and people are left to fend for themselves. So the Federal Reserve stepped in and took action. First, they lowered their benchmark interest rate to 0%. Then on top of that, they began injecting $120 billion a month into our economy. They do so by buying $80 billion in treasuries and $40 billion in mortgage-backed security. Second, the Fed is projecting to increase interest rate slowly over the next three to four years. The benchmark rate may go up from 0% to 2% by 2024. Finally, they also made it clear that they intend to keep this plan somewhat flex flexible so they can make adjustments and pivot accordingly, depending on how the market reacts to these changes. By the way, before I move on and talk about the next big change, which is the ending of the mortgage forbearance program, I would like to answer a common question I hear a lot, which is about the current rising housing prices and inflation. As we previously discussed, inflation at the current 6.8% is one of the highest numbers we have seen over the past 30 to 40 years. However, housing prices seem to have gone up even higher than that, actually much higher than that. So what is the disconnect here? Well, the answer is that when we talk about housing prices, we usually think of the cost of purchasing a property. Uh, sales price of real estate is actually not a part of the consumer price index calculation. In fact, there are 80,000 consumables and it, the list includes lodging, the cost of a paying for a hotel, or a rental cost, the cost of uh, renting apartments or houses, but not the purchase price of real estate, which is considered an asset. Okay, with that in mind, let's talk about the next big thing, which is the ending of the mortgage forbearance program. The CARES Act was passed on March 27, 2020, and it allowed homeowners to apply for mortgage forbearance so they can temporarily pause their mortgage payments for up to a year. Soon after the CARES Act was put in place, about 4.2 million homeowners paused their mortgage payments, and that made up about 8% of all mortgage properties in the United States. Then, the worry became what happens when this program is over and all these people have to resume their mortgage payments. So as you can recall, uh, the forbearance program was then extended for another year. So this is considered positive news in the marketplace because even though a million households seems like a big number, if you take this number and compare it to the historical data, it seems the potential foreclosure crisis has been completely averted so far because the remaining 2% of the mortgage properties, a portion of them are likely to have equity in their homes as a result of the recent housing boom. Combined with the current market condition being a strong seller's market, these homeowners are likely to be able to sell their homes instead of going under. And this is very different from 2008. Finally, Here's the latest housing data in the Seattle area for your information. In King County, 
Inventory is 0.3 months, which is 62% less than the same time last year. And that's extremely low because the balance market is right between four months to six months. In Seattle, the median home price is $825,000, which is up by 3.3% from the same time last year. In Bellevue, the median home price is $1.66 million, which is up by 27% from the same time last year. In terms of looking into the future, there are so many moving pieces right now, and the Fed is doing this juggling act between inflation and pacing our economy. If you're curious about my personal opinion for our real estate market in 2022, please reach out to me. I also welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.